Hello, and welcome to Linux Action News, episode 275, recorded on January 11th, 2023. I'm Chris. And I'm Wes. Hello, Wes. Let's do the news. 2023 is already shaping up to be an excellent year for desktop Linux users. KDE developers had a busy first week getting things ready for Plasma 527, the final major release of the 5 Series. Indeed. Kind of wild to even be thinking about that. And so not only has just a huge amount of polish and fit work gone into this release, but it looks like multi-monitor support has been totally revamped. KDE developer Marco Martin wrote a blog post outlining the multi-monitor work that's been done in Plasma 527 so far. Overall, the goal was to provide a more predictable experience when plugging in a new or existing display, as well as updates to other areas of Plasma to improve how they handle display change. Oh, that is the people's work there, Wes. Um, And, you know, there's uh, things like no more default empty desktops after connecting a screen that you've already connected in the past. That's great. And huge for us laptop users that are unplugging and replugging external monitors. And also another significant improvement in that area. There will be a nice quality of life improvement if you use a USB-C dock, seemingly. And uh, no difference in desktops between X11 displays and Whalen displays. That all sounds well worth the upgrade right there. But on top of that, there's all the other nice-to-see fixes and improvements you can find in Nate's weekly write-up, which we'll have a link to in the notes. As of this recording, the KDE Wiki shows Plasma 527 targeting a February 14th release. I'm having a hard time waiting. GNOME users, don't feel left out. The project is targeting March 22nd for GNOME's 44 release, and it's probably still too early in the development cycle to really know for sure what features are a lock and actually will ship. But there is one patch set that we've been watching with some anticipation. It's the Dynamic Triple Buffering Patch. Are you tired of sluggish desktop performance, especially on systems with Intel integrated graphics or a Raspberry Pi? Well, the solution may be in the implementation of triple buffering when needed. This technique has the potential to dramatically boost the overall performance of your Linux desktop experience. Canonical's Daniel Van Vogt recently shared some exciting news in this week's Ubuntu Desktop Status Update, saying that after overcoming some challenges and delving deeper into the conversation about triple buffering, they are making steady progress and are getting closer to landing in Munner 44. I hope so. Anything that just makes the desktop experience smoother and more performant on integrated graphics, I'm all about that. I, I'm not positive, but I think there is some work that also has to happen outside of Mutter for this to land everywhere. But we can be pretty confident that the basics of this work, because Canonical's been applying this to their version of GNOME for almost two years now. But I really have to be clear, this is not a done deal. We don't know for sure this is going to make it in 44. In fact, there is a chance not everything required will land in time for the 44 cycle feature freeze. But we'll keep an eye on it because I'm pretty optimistic. And there's been a lot of hard work that's gone into this that could finally pay off for end users and make the experience even better and create a lot of excitement around GNOME 44. Alexander Moten with IX Systems has submitted a pull request to OpenZFS that could result in some nice performance gains. This is pretty clever. So the patch set enables an improved method of handling uncacheable buffers in the file system. So this new method allows for ARC, the CFS ARC, to have knowledge about these uncacheable buffers, which then can improve read and write speeds. It also means less CPU cycles by up to 22% while getting the same or better throughput. And since uncacheable buffers should no longer stay in the ARC or adaptive replacement cache for too long, this patch also tries to optimize I.O. by allocating the ARC's physical buffers as linear, which allows those buffers to be shared and avoids creating two memory copies for uncompressed data for both reads and writes. It's just like I've always said, you got to have linear buffers, Wes. I mean, everybody knows that. Uh, joking aside, though, with the combination of these improvements, you're going to actually get considerably improved sequential single-threaded read speeds. And then when you combine that with the fact that there's a 22% CPU overhead reduction that I mentioned, 
well, overall, this is a really nice optimization. And you don't got to do anything because the good news is it's already been merged. So it's just a matter of time until it makes it to a distro near you. Linux 4.9 was released way back in 2016. Celebrated then for its batch of Intel drivers and hardware support. But in fact, by today's standards, it was really kind of a basic release. Basic, yes, but also kind of great. This week, Greg H. released Linux 4.9.337 as the final update to this widely deployed LTS series. As for the current version of the kernel, Linux 6.1, well, it's expected to be named the next LTS, though that has not yet been officially announced. Linode.com slash LAN. That's where you go to get $100 in 60-day credit on a new account, and it's a great way to support the show while you are checking out fast, reliable cloud hosting built with Linux users in mind and the best support in the biz, like real humans every single day. And I suppose you're going to also appreciate the fact that they're 30 to 50% cheaper than the hyperscalers that have their crazy esoteric platforms that are single-purpose learning situations. And on top of that, besides the great support, the Linux mindset and everything, and the fantastic pricing, they also have the best performance with 11 data centers today and a dozen more coming online this year. And they feature great, great things like S3 compatible object storage, 40 gigabit connections, NVMe disks if you want them, AMD Epic CPUs if you needs it, integrated transparent backups, Kubernetes, Terraform, Ansible support, great documentation, etc. That's why you need the 100 bucks because there's so much to explore. And if you're a beginner or a pro, you're going to find a groove that's great for you. Really go try it. Go kick the tires. Go build something. Go learn something. It's a great opportunity to support the show and try out something really awesome. Go to linode.com slash LAN. It's what we use for everything we deploy to the public. It's what our brand new website runs on. Linode.com slash L-A-N. And thank you to Collide. Endpoint security doesn't have to be a battle between IT admins and end users. Because Collide does things differently. Collide provides user-centered solutions for companies that slack. Users will receive security recommendations, and Collide will automatically notify your team when their devices are insecure and give them step-by-step instructions to fix the problem. And Collide's dashboard allows IT admins to easily monitor the security of the entire fleet, whether they're on Mac, Windows, or yes, Linux. With Collide, you can build a culture of security and meet your compliance goals. So go try it out for free at collide.com slash LAN and get a goodie bag just for activating your trial. It's time to put users first with Collide. That's K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash LAN. And for our final story this week, Michael Larabel over at Pharonix has an update on the state of the open source NVIDIA Vulkan driver known as NVK. I think the big news over there is that the driver can now play some video games like the Talos Principle. That is a Vulkan 1.0 game. And the recent progress on the NVK driver means it's possible to render those games now. Longtime open source Nouveau developer and growing Rust enthusiast Carl Herbst recently showed off this work on chaos.social. He had some screenshots of the game up and going. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Although um, he did follow up in another post saying, quote, performance is terrible, but that hopefully will be resolved with the GSP work, which is still ongoing. Yeah, that's due to the Nouveau DRM kernel driver not supporting reclocking for modern NVIDIA GPUs. Being able to reclock the GPU from low frequencies up to the higher performance states, well, not only improves power draw on average, but of course also lets the system achieve that boost in performance when you need it for a game. Yes, but there is good news on that front on on being able to control those clock speeds. Uh, The GPU system processor is found in the RTX 2000 series and newer graphics cards. Getting the driver to work with that solves this reclocking challenge that they've faced really, I mean, for years now. 
And it's exciting because that work is active and underway right now. Before we get too excited, of course, the reality here is there's a rather long list of work that still needs to be done. And uh, perhaps nouveau kernel interface changes are also needed for proper NVK support. In the meantime, it's probably a safe bet that if you're looking for a smooth, out-of-box experience with graphics on Linux, you should probably stick to Intel or AMD GPUs, at least for the next year or two. I think that's a great point. Um, I think it's pretty easy for those of us outside the project to lose kind of a picture of how hard and complicated this must be and really appreciate the uh, magnitude, really, of work ahead of them. Because not only are these graphics cards just crazy complex hardware devices, but it's possible the software around them might be even more so, especially when you consider the entire desktop stack. But it does get me hopeful for the state of Linux graphics down the road a bit, maybe a year or so, maybe two years. Between today, where you have things like the Intel Arc GPUs coming out, uh, the AMD GPUs that have upstream drivers, and now this MVK driver, things are going to be much smoother and a lot more accessible for future Linux users. Things are just going to get better and better. And you know we're going to keep an eye on that and everything else going on in the world of Linux and open source. So don't miss a single episode. Go over to linuxactionnews.com slash subscribe for all the ways to get each and every episode. And linuxactionnews.com slash contact to let us know which graphics driver you're using. <laughs> Did we miss the story? Was there something you wanted us to cover that you didn't hear? You could boost it in. Let us know what we missed with a new podcast app over at newpodcastapps.com. Maybe we'll cover it in a future episode. And don't worry, we'll be back here next week with our take on the latest Linux and open source news. Thanks for joining us. And that's all the news for this week. <laughs>